Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Dennis Borsch and I'm going to show you my most memorable Rapport Jobava game. This is the critical position. I was wondering, hmm, hmm, this position looks awfully, awfully suspicious for my opponent, but it took me a little bit of time to figure out how I win this. So if you don't want any spoilers, here is your moment to shine. Pause the video. Take your time, have a bit of coffee, a little bit of tea, just chill to the music and have at it. That's what you want to do. Just have at it, have a bit of fun. All right, so let's go back to the beginning. So d4, knight f6, knight c3, d5, bishop f4. This is the Rapport Jobava variation. There, white is basically playing a reverse Chigorin with an extra bishop f4 move, which not only puts some pressure on the c pawn but prepares an eventual long castling strat for white. e6, this is the most normal move, and here I have my unique wrinkle. I play here a3, even though e3, bishop b4, knight e2 has been the main line and played plenty of times before. When I play a3, it's mostly against getting that bishop to b4 and just stopping that. Also, I might have this knight go to a better square, namely e5. So bishop d6 is played, bishop g5. And this is a little bit of a stuttering that I really like playing because I didn't commit to e3. I can make it in one go. So as in the game, I took, took e4 and we suddenly get into a Rubinstein French kind of position and you can see this a3 move being extra useful there is no more bishop b4 and I threaten to fork both the bishop and the queen so d takes knight takes e4 hitting the queen and the bishop queen e7 knight f3 b6 now of course castling is an alternative here but b6 is very normal and here I wondered what I should do and I kind of anticipate my pub to go get bishop b7 there. So I'm going bishop b5 check just to lure or close the position down. So if bishop d7 I go here and the bishop doesn't really want to be on d7. And if you go c6, this happened in the game, then in that case the bishop will be closed in and black will have to waste an additional move to play pawn from c6 to c5. Bishop b7, queen e2, Kind of preparing both ideas, not really showing my intentions. Knight d7, but of course I'm going to go long. I do want to go for an attack. Knight f6, and here I was at odds what to do, but in general I feel if I can take my opponent's bishop pair, I will. So I took knight e5, castles. And we get this typical opposite side castling position where the one who gets the attack in first wins. So no wonder I go for g4, especially that black has committed with that h pawn. There is that hook that I can use there. c5, hook g1. I do not care for the d pawn. Takes f4. Not in a rush. I'm still stabilizing my knight, preparing g5. Hook c8. But now I go for g5. Threatening both knight g takes f6 and g takes h6, opening up that king side. h takes, rook takes, knight e4. And this was the moment I was pondering, okay, this just doesn't look good. But it's not as trivial as it may seem at first sight. You have this feeling that, okay, maybe there is something going on here. So obviously I calculate it takes, that's a logical move. There. And if I check, then the king waltzes away, running towards the hills. But if I manage to take here, go queen g4 check, king f6, there's no mate there because of knight g5, but I can stop that king from running away. So they take on g7, queen g4 check, king f6, queen h4. Now, of course, if king g7, then rook g1, and mate is to follow. So queen h4, the only move is king f5. And for the first look, when I was kind of wondering how to win this position, I was thinking, hmm, interesting. But wait a second. What if I just pin this knight and just set up queen g5? 
So I played bishop d3. Quite an astounding silent move. Black is actually up a whole rook, but is completely helpless. If you go rook h8, is queen g5 checkmate? The queen is taboo and you can't touch it, and the king is checkmated in the middle of the board. My opponent played rook g8, and after queen h5, of course king f6, there's mate here, can't run away. And if you go take, as happened, rook f1, here my opponent resigned, but after king e3, rook f3 is not an ugly checkmate that you can play in the rapport Jobava. The other line that was interesting here in the case of queen d8, white can go bishop takes c4, king takes c4, queen h7 check, if you go f5 I take on b7, king d5, boom, rook takes d4 check, setting up all sorts of threats, black has to take, queen d3, King c5, four. Checkmate. So this is actually one of my beautiful, most beautiful chess games in the rock board Jobava. And if you want to learn this opening, do check out the description below. I will post you the link of more material that you can use later on for your endeavors in this opening. So if you like this game, please subscribe or leave a like on this video. Thanks again for joining and see you next time. Bye bye.